Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for this meeting. We know that you are going to give us victory. We know that all that you have ordained for us will come to us in the name of Jesus. And Father, we want to ask that you speak to us now. As we kick off with this meeting tonight, we ask that you will arise on our behalf. We ask that you will show us your wisdom and you speak into our lives deliberately. Blessed be your name right now, O God, and let Christ himself be glorified amidst every heart that is tuning into this meeting. We ask that you reach out to them by the mighty hand that you have stretched out upon us already. Take all the glory right now. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to please turn your Bibles to the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 6. That's where our theme text has been taken. And we are going to be uh, just introducing that tonight briefly. And after which, we will pray together before we retire. Jeremiah chapter 6. And I would like you to please read from verse 16. Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also, I said, Watchmen over you, saying, Akin to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not akin. Therefore, hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon these people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not akin unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts, even now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, our theme for this year's Deliverance Convocation is Ancient Paths. But all I want to do tonight is to pray together with you, wherever you are, to, to prepare your heart. That the things that God wants to do in our lives, and the way God wants to move with us, and the things that the Spirit of God wants to work out in our midst, None of us will miss it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the passage we have read, I've raised some very critical issues which I would like quickly to highlight before we pray tonight. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest. For your souls. But they said. We will not walk therein. Two things quickly. That I wish. We will concentrate on tonight. As we pray together. The fact is that. This invitation. Is from the Lord himself. So it does says the Lord. If it was what any man can do. Or if it's just a, the word of a man, I would have said, don't worry. You can refuse it and go uh, scot-free. But God himself is inviting us, particularly in this convocation, to stand in the waves and to ask for the old paths, for the ancient paths. Where is the good way? And for us to walk therein. I don't want to go ahead to look at those who say we will not walk therein. Because I believe that several of us that are on this uh, meeting today, what brought us in and what has drawn you to this convocation this year is that you are desiring to walk with God. 
you are desiring to get into the divine counsel of God for your life as an individual. You are desiring to discover what is God's word for our lives at a time like this. And so the first word that I want you to quickly mark as we are going ahead, say, thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways, as if there is need for you to stand still. There is need for you to halt, and no matter where you are running up and down, it is time to stand still and hear what God has to say to you. It is time for you to stand still and hear what is the direction God will want your life to go. There are many things that some of us have tried, try and error here and there. There are so many things that you have put your hand upon. You have not particularly got a clear direction, a clear leading for your life. But what we have seen is the fact that you are just moving in and out. The Lord God is saying today, thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways. Stand ye in the ways. Stand for God to be able to address your matter. Stand for God to be able to speak into your situation. Stand so that God can address you. Many, many times when God wants to speak to a man, God does not speak to a man who is on the run. When God needed to speak to Moses, let me show you what God waited for. In Exodus chapter 3, God wanted to speak to Moses. God wanted to bring direction to his life. God wanted to show him the reason why he had been preserved. And God wanted him to enter into his call, into his destiny. But it was not possible until God got his attention. Now go to Exodus chapter 3, you will see something there quickly. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Hera. Ore. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Right, that's it. And Moses said, I will now turn aside. And see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, that was when God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and he said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. The first instruction that will make you to maximize much of what God will be doing in the course of this laborers' convocation this year. Even though it has not been possible for all of us to have gathered everywhere we used to come from. But thank God that several of us are in different places, uh, several of us are in different centers, and we thank God. Now, wherever you are, the first instruction is stand ye in the ways. Stand still so that you can hear what God has to say to you. God cannot be running after you with his instruction. As long as you're on the run, as long as you are busy, as long as you are looking at other things, it will be impossible for God to actually get across to you. It was only when Moses turned aside and he put aside whatever he was doing. And he said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. It was when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. That God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. As you have come into this meeting. The fact that we are not all together in a camp. Is also a challenge. The challenge of multitasking. 
They challenge yourself. Let it be on. I will just quickly do something and come back. The challenge of you, you know, scrolling into several other things will not allow you to hear what does God want to say to you in this particular year's meeting. This meeting that God is bringing you to, and God is saying, go back to the ancient paths. It requires that we will sit down and say, okay, God, where is the ancient path? What are the things that we have put as push aside and we are running after things that look new? Lord, what is the ancient path for my life? You need to stand still to hear what God will say. You know, when Samuel was to bring that special encounter and anointing on the life of, uh, of Saul, who became the king of Israel. If you turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 9, you will see what he said to him. And I want you to go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 26. Verse 26. He said, And when they rose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day, as Samuel called Saul up to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send you away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said unto Saul, Bid your servant pass on before us. And he passed on, but stand thou still a while that I may show you the word of God. Every time God needs to show you his direction for life, every time God needs to show you what his will for your life should be, every time God needs to show you his word, it is required that you must stand still. And so the first exhortation I bring to you tonight is for you to stand still. Stand still. Suspend every other thing. And when we get on our knees to pray, I'd like you to quickly say to God, everything else that would divide or distract my attention, I want to put it aside. I want to stand still that I may hear what you have to say to me at a time like this. I want to stand still that I may listen to what the Spirit has to say at a time like this. Stand ye in the waves and see and ask for the old parts. The next critical word that I just want to draw your attention to for now, he said, stand ye in the waves and see and ask for the old parts. Is a sieve the old paths have become quite obscured. It's as if the ancient paths had become, you know, almost discarded. That it is no more prominent. Unless you ask, you are not likely to discover it. Unless you look for it, you may not find it. Unless you check out for it, everything else seem to become, you know, highly advertised. As you are going on the road, you see all kind of billboards. Even those of you that want to serve God, there are so many things you are seeing, but they are not in keeping with the ancient path. They are not in keeping with the word of God. They are not in keeping with what God wants to do with us at a time like this. Even though it looks, it looks popular, it appears as if everybody is using it. But yet, the Bible said there is a way that seemed right in the eyes of man. But the end of it is destruction. Jesus has said, broad is the way that leads to destruction and thousands, many there are that are walking there. But narrow is the path and straight is the gate that leads to life. 
So if you do not look for it, you may not find it. He said, few there be that find it. Now, when he say few there be that find it, that means it's to be looked for. That means you are supposed to ask for it. And so I'm going to ask you, apart from standing still, apart from all things, from all the running up and down, apart from being busy, can you open your heart to God and say, Lord, I have come to you. I have come to touch you. I have come to see you. I have come to hear what you have to say. Secondly, you are going to ask God, Lord, where is the old path? Where is the ancient path? What is it that you want me not to depart from? What is it that you don't want me to miss? Now, as we are looking at that, do you see what the word of God also say now? He said, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? Now, may I pray that the Spirit of God will give you understanding. That you see, you may think the old parts or the ancient parts, you may think is old and is obsolete. You may imagine that, oh, it's no more popular. You may think that that ancient path is no more effective, is no more working. But look, I want you to know the Bible calls it the good way. The Bible calls it the good way. God himself has announced the ancient path as the good way. In the course of this meeting by the grace of God, we will be tracing, we will be looking at scriptures. What is the ancient path that leads to glory? What is the ancient path that leads to the place of rest? What is the ancient path that will bring you to what God ordained for your life right from the beginning? But may I note with you, even though many, many may no longer want to walk on this way, that way is the way that leads to glory. It is the good way. But now, still in that Bible verse, because I'm simply doing a general, a general overview tonight to give you uh, a, a takeoff point for us to be able to pray and for this meeting to kick off by the grace of God. Now he said, where is the good way and walk therein? Let us agree together before we start this meeting. It is of no use for you to be attending this meeting. It is of no use for you to even stand still. Maybe you have taken uh, some days off. Maybe you have taken some casual leave. Maybe by the grace of God, you have gone into a retreat center. You are locked up and you are willing. But it will not be of any profit unless you choose to walk therein. So we are going to pray tonight. That Lord, whatever you will reveal to me, I will walk there. Whatever you will point to me, oh God, I will walk there. Whatever you will show me, my Father in heaven, I will walk there. Whichever way you are going to show me, even if it means I'm going to take a U-turn, even if it means I'm going to leave and abandon the things that I've been doing, Lord, I will walk therein. I will do that which you show me. It is of no use to hear the word of God and not do it. The word of God says, If any man hear these things of mine and do it then, I will liken him to a wise man who has built his house upon the rock. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. Let me quickly read that. He said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sins of mine, and doeth them, I would liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, 
for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these sins of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell and great was the fall of it. Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to note that if you are not going to walk there, if you are not going to commit yourself to obedience, if you are not going to commit yourself to acting on the truth of the word of God that comes to you, then you have only elected yourself to be a fool. Because when God's word comes to a man, it helps you to build a destiny. It helps you to establish a path for life. It helps you to, to walk in the good way. If a man sees the good way and turns the other way, he's going to the bush. He's going to the place of destruction. He's going to dungeon. So before we uh, go on with this meeting, I need to ask you to make a commitment. Lord, I will walk with your word. I will not make myself a foolish builder. I will not just be compi- I mean, piling up messages. Uh, some say, oh, I have 1,000 uh, video of uh, Brother Guile. I have uh, another 1,000 of that man of God, of this man of God. That is not the issue. Are you walking there? Are you walking according to the principles of the word of God? If you have seen the good way, if you have seen the ancient path, are you walking there? If you are not walking in what God says to you, if you are not walking on the path that God shows you, then you are walking on the path that leads to destruction. You are walking on the path that leads to hell. So Jesus said, even though the rain came, the wind, uh, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house, it did not fall for only one reason. It was founded upon the rock. If it is going to be founded upon the rock, it means you are going to obey God's word. Your path in life will become solidified. When you agree, say, Lord, I will walk therein. I will not just speak. I will walk along the light that you are shining to me. And do you know James chapter 1 says, Whosoever heareth the word of God and doeth it not. Let me show you again what James chapter 1 says about that. He said, But be ye doers of the word, that's James chapter 1 and verse 22. And not hear us only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goes his way and straight away forgeted what manner of man he was. But also look at into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man, this man shall be blessed in his deed. The only way for you to be blessed, the only way for God to help you, the only way for you to advance and in building a destiny that is that is based and built on the rock, the rock that never fails, is for you to choose that, Lord, whatever you say to me, I will walk there. If you are not making that kind of commitment, then you are not making any commitment at all. If you are just interested in hearing and not obeying, and not doing what God says to you, I'd like to say to you, you are not doing well. You are not taking the right step in life. You are not pursuing what God would have wanted you to do for yourself. And so look at that scripture again. He said, where is the good way? <clears throat> and walk therein. Now see what the result will be. 
and you shall find rest for your souls. You shall find rest for your souls. Now, as soon as you see that statement, and you shall find rest for your souls, you will know that it is Jesus who particularly offered that direction. And I want you to read that with me. And that possibly will be where we will anchor our discussions this night before I release you again. In Matthew chapter 11. So all of you please come to Matthew 11. Matthew chapter 11. Now you know when uh, Jeremiah said, Ask, where is the good way? What is the old path? It will look as if you'll be asking here and there, where is the good way? 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 Where is the good path? Who can show me what to do? Who can show me where to go? That may look as if that's what we are saying. But you see, Jesus already with all authority and with every assurance in John chapter 14, look at what he says. And perhaps that will be the beginning of all that I want to say to you tonight. Jesus said, I am the way. So when we are talking about the ancient path, when we are talking about the good way, we are asked there will be several issues that we will be needing maybe to talk about to highlight. But the bottom line is that the ancient path the good way is no one else but Jesus. So if by God's grace as I come tomorrow to begin this series of uh, the talks on the theme talk, what will become my very focus is to focus on the good way. And the good way is not two good ways, not three good ways, not four good ways. You will notice that even in uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, he said, stand ye in the ways, there may be ways, and see and ask for the old parts, where is the good way? Now Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, so permit me to quickly say that the good way, the ancient path that leads to glory, we cannot find it anywhere else apart from in Christ Jesus. Actually, Jesus himself did not say, I am a way. He did not say, I am one of the ways. Jesus Christ himself just declared, I am the way. So, I know that God had already given me an agenda that we are going to study this week. And it is the ancient paths. And as far as I can see from God's word all over, no matter how we try to describe it, it leads only to one person. It leads to Jesus, who is the way, who is the truth, and who is the life. Now, before I go from there, let me quickly ask you to look at that. Even though that's a common passage, even a primary school child knows it. But many times, you don't know what it is, what is the implication of it. Jesus says, I am the way. And if I stop at that, he says, no man comes to the Father except by me. If you follow any other way, you are not going to arrive. If you try any other way, it doesn't lead to heaven. It doesn't lead to the Father. It does not lead to glory. Every other way leads to a dungeon. Every other way, no matter how popular, no matter how many people are trooping on it, the Bible says it leads to destruction. Even though many are running on all those ways, there are no two ways that leads to heaven. 
I am the way. No man comes to the Father except by me. But I want you to note that why Jesus said I am the way, he again said I am the truth. Wow. I am the truth. Even though we are, our theme this year is talking about ancient parts, and when we use the word ancient, some people may mistakenly think that we are talking of obsolete parts. Or we are talking about things that are outdated. Or things that are, have become mundane. No. Jesus says, I am the truth. And if you will understand what that means, it means everything else that is not congruent with Jesus' life, that is not aligned with Christ, is not the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. And if he is the truth, it means finding him, finding his way, is finding the truth. It means connecting with him, means connecting with the truth. It means connecting with the word of God. It means connecting with the way of God. It means connecting with what will take you to fulfilling the purpose of God for your life. He now said, and I am the life. I am the life. When I come back by God's grace tomorrow, I will begin to now study the ancient path. And we will establish immediately that that path that our fathers trod before, that led so many people to glory, God has not changed it. He has not adjusted it. He has not improved on it because it does not need improvement. It cannot be edited because there is nothing new that will add to it or subtract to it. It's perfect. So he said, I am the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. Dear brother, dear sister, have you sat back to say, Lord, where is the good way? And honestly, that simple request will take you to find this man of Calvary, to make you to discover him for who he is, to make you to touch him the way he is. Now, but because the Lord Jesus himself is eager to bring you on this way, he now threw an invitation. Whereas in chapter 6 of Jeremiah, he said, ask for the old parts. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But in chapter 11 of Matthew, and from verse 28, we saw Jesus, the way, the truth, the life, the good way, beckoning and saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest. All ye that labor. All ye that are struggling, all ye that are overloaded, overloaded with cares, overloaded with the system of this world, obligations that the devil has placed on many lives. I hear Jesus say, come unto me. Again, I want you to know that he said, come unto me. He didn't say, come unto the program. Didn't say come into my philosophies. He said, Come unto me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man, no man, no man comes to the Father 
except by me. So the invitation that you threw today, which I wish I would throw as we will be drawing our heart to God in prayer, say, call unto me all ye that labor, all ye that are heavy lady, all ye that have been under the weights, and I will give you rest. Now, this call, as far as I see all the time, I find that for the first person who have never met him, who have just been struggling in life, you hear him speaking to you today, say, come to me. Some of you, you have gone to pastors, you have gone to preachers, you have gone to mountains, you have gone to one thing or the other. Even sometimes you have come to Christianity, but you've not come to me. Come to me. Don't come to a system. Don't come to an organization. Don't come to program. Don't come to a facility. Don't come to people. Don't come to one organization. Come unto me. And he spoke so clearly and so authoritatively. Come unto me. I will give you rest. All of you that are heavy laden and laboring. And you see, when he used the word all, that implies that there's no exception. That means there's nothing about you that will be too heavy for him to bear. That means there's nothing happening to you that God is saying your own is too much. That means that no matter who you are, no matter what you have gone through, no matter what has happened to you over the years, no matter what, what has happened, yes, and no matter where you have plunged your life into, if only you hear him say, come to me. Jeremiah say, ask, ask, stand in the waves. Stop running. Stop running at task -getter. Stop doing try and error. Come unto me. I will give you rest. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your challenge is. Excuse me, my dear brother, my dear sister, maybe where you are listening to this message, and perhaps you are even alone in your own place. Perhaps you are just looking at it on your own uh, uh, personal phone or whatever. But this day, the Lord is saying, you come unto me. Some of you, you went to church and you were disappointed. Some of you, the ushers you met, they are the first people that brought confusion to your life. Some of you, even you met a, a man of God and he cheated you. And you are thinking that, ah, there's nothing there, there's nothing there. Excuse me. You, you touch a wrong person. Come unto me, the Lord Jesus says. And so today, as we begin this meeting, since God is saying, seek, ask for the old parts. Ask and say, where is the good way? And walk therein. I hear Jesus say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And so when Jesus Christ said, come unto me, I want you to know that he has what it takes to settle your need. He has what it takes to solve the problem. He has all that it takes to sort your life out. He has all that it takes to bring you out of that trouble. So you hear he said, I will give you rest. Brother, you know you have gone to Habali, some of you. Some of you have gone to prophetesses. Some of and they promise we will help you. We will give you rest. Some of you have gone to doctors. And doctors say, Madam, don't worry. When we are finished, you will be alright. You believed. You kept going there. If they say you are fasting for seven days, you tried. But at the end of it, you got nothing. Some of you have gone to the mosque. And you are saying, yes. 
if I can only finish uh, the Quran, I finish this uh, thing they prescribe, my life will be all right. You gone, but you didn't find rest. It's because you did not touch him. You did not touch him. It is the woman with issue of blood that said, look, I just want to touch the hem of his garment. Even though there are many people that are thronging Jesus left and right, but when that woman touched him, Jesus himself says, somebody touch me. Virtue has gone out of me. The virtue for your deliverance, the virtue for your healing, the virtue for your forgiveness, and the forgiveness of your numerous sins, is in Christ Jesus. He said, come to me, I will give you rest. It is possible that you are under a heavy load of guilt. There's a guilt that has come on your life for years. People use philosophy to help you out of it, but no way. Jesus said, bring it. All ye that are laboring and are heavy laden, come to me, I will give you rest. My dear brother, my dear sister, are you coming to him? Are you coming to the Savior? Are you bringing every challenge to him? Say, come to me and I will give you rest. But do you notice that in verse 29, he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly of heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. You notice that in that verse 16 of chapter 6 of Jeremiah that we are reading, he said, And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. Now, when he said, Take my yoke upon you, you know the meaning of that? He simply said, Come and walk with me. Come and walk in this way. And if you will connect your life with me, if you will take my yoke upon you, and you will learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, I'm accessible. I'm not so difficult for you to find. I can walk with you, and you can walk with me. He said, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. My dear brother, as I draw you to the place where we can actually take a decision before God right now, I want to check with you. The end of that verse 16, which I've not been reading, say, but they said we will not walk there. Many people have heard divine invitation. Many people have been confronted with the mercy of God. Many people have had the Spirit of God tapping them and saying, this is the way for you. But somehow, somehow, something blocked their understanding. Something blocked their heart. And they say, we will not walk there. We will not walk there. This night, do not say you will not walk there any. Do not let anything block your heart from turning to the Lord. Do not let anything stop you from experiencing what God is offering us in the course of this meeting this year. Do not allow anything to block you. When he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. There are a few things there that we are going to be dealing with, but not tonight. But let me just highlight it for you, said, and learn of me. When we say ask for the ancient path, it is so that we may know about it. It is so that we may learn it. And it is so that we may walk therein. It is so that we may find rest. We may discover what will give you rest. You may discover what will give you what you are looking for in your lifetime. So this uh, moment, can I now put two questions to you before I ask you to take a decision? This meeting is starting at the, on this note. 
ancient paths. Ancient paths, the good way that leads to glory. The good way that leads to heaven. The good way that will bring you to all your desire in life. The good way that will give you opportunity to actually walk side by side with the Lord Jesus. That will make you to be in an intimate, unbroken communion with him. What will be your choice? What will be your choice? You know, we have done this convocation year in and year out for several years. Even when we were doing it in, the, in our small uh, space. God was always speaking and is moving on with us. But my question to you is this. God has brought you to this point today. God has brought you to this experience at this time. God is asking you to stand still and ask for the way. Where is the good way? Now, as far as God is concerned, if he had finished with you, he wouldn't be bringing you to this meeting. If he does not have another plan for your life, he will not be drawing you here. If God is not uh, interested in bringing you to rest, this meeting will not come your way. But this meeting has come your way because God, in his mercy, has given you opportunity of finding direction and finding rest for your soul. Now, this night, as we're going to call on God together, as a beginning of this convocation, I want to ask you, will you stand still? Will you say, oh God, I have tried here, I've tried here, I've tried here, I've tried here. Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming to the good way. I'm coming to the way, the truth, and the life. I'm coming to him who is able to do for me what I cannot do for myself. I'm coming to him who is able to help me out of my predicaments. I'm coming to him who is able to give me rest. Now I said to you, if you are not going to walk there in, you are not going to walk in the way. It's of no use for you coming for this meeting itself. This meeting will not benefit you if you are not determined that God, whatever you say to me, I want to obey you. Whichever way you say it, I want to take it seriously. However you will point to me, I will respond to you. I want to walk with you. I want to move with you. I want to serve you. I want to walk with you. I want to walk in the good way. I want to walk in the truth. I want to walk with your life. I want your life to be my life. I want your way to be my way. I want your truth to be the truth that regulates my life continuously. So as we call on God together right now, and as I charge you individually, wherever you are, wherever you are, whether you are back in your own uh, private place or you are in a center where several brothers and sisters are, don't be ashamed to respond. He says, stand still. Ask, where is the ancient path? Where is the good way? And if you discover it, walk therein. And I thank God that God is not asking you to go beating about the bush. Jesus stands here today and said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am that life you are looking for. I am the one that will give you rest. Come unto me. I see the hand of the Lord beckoning. Some of you say, but oh, I, I thought I gave my life to Christ. You did, but you've not followed in the way. Some of you received an initial miracle with God, but you've not followed in the way, so you are getting entangled. You are getting confused. You are getting stuck in the mud of this life. What will you do? You must come to him again. 
Anyone who is hearing me here, any way that leads you into sin, any way that takes you back from what you used to know with God, the Bible said the way of the backslider is rough. The way of the backslider is hard. Anyone who is not tracing his path on this good way, you are going through tons and tissues. Perhaps you used to even be a Christian, but you missed the way. You went into something else. You have been lured into another fellowship. And that has become an entanglement around your life. Jesus said, Come, I will give you rest. Stand in the in, in the in the ways now. Stand still. Ask Lord, where is the good way? Where do you want me to 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 to, to turn my life to? But ever before you finish asking, Jesus said, "I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man actually can come to the Father." Except by me. And so this evening, will you take a decision as I will be leading you to pray? Will you say, Oh God, that which you will say to me and that which you are saying to me here, I am ready to obey it. I'm ready to walk with it. I'm ready to walk therein. I am coming to you, Lord. No matter my challenges, maybe you have been falling and rising. A week today you are all right, but another week you are down. Today you are you are you are jumping with God. Tomorrow you are in the mud. It's because you are not walking in this way. This way is the way that is most stable for life. This way is the way that God has ordained for anybody that wants to go with Him to go. So this time, as we call on God. And as we look up to heaven on your behalf, the only one thing I want to ask you, will you walk the honey? Will you take a step of faith this moment? Will you say, Lord, I will not be part of those who say we will not walk the honey. I will not be those who, when they hear God's word, they only stiffen their neck. He said, I set watchmen over you, saying, he akin to the sound of the trumpet. Even this meeting is a trumpet that God is sounding to you. Even this meeting, God is allowing it to come to you so that that which the enemy is planning will not see the light of day concerning you. So I'm going to request you to respond to God as we go to God in prayer. To respond to what the Holy Spirit has to say at this critical time and to take a personal decision this personal decision does not depend on what your friend have said does not depend on what uh, your your colleague is saying it does not even depend on what your parents have said or they have not said it will be you taking a decision i'm coming to you lord say come to me and i say you have come to many people before you have gone to many things before. You've gone to programs. You've gone to people. You have gone to even organization. You've gone to even church. And the only thing you met, you met people. You didn't meet him. And that's why that problem was not resolved. This evening, let's pray together. Let's ask God and say, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming home. When the choir was singing, there was an invitation. An invitation to say, bring it. Bring it to the feet of the Savior. There's nothing you bring that will be too heavy for him to bear. There's nothing you bring that will be too embarrassing for God to resolve. There's nothing you bring that will be too much for God to handle on your behalf. And so this moment, wherever you are, those of you that are gathered in centers, can you take a step now to pray? Those of you that are alone where you are, can you take a, a, a step to call on God? And those of you that are just listening by audio, God is speaking to you again. And God is saying, ask, where is the ancient path? 
where is the good way and walk therein and walk therein that is the counsel of the spirit to you tonight and you shall find rest for your souls all those who are looking for rest for their lives all those who are looking for heaven to answer them all those who are saying oh god i need a divine intervention i want to request you to come and say come to me i am the way I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So I'm going to request you wherever you are. We're going to call on God together at this point. We're going to say, Lord, as we are beginning the laborers' convocation this year, I want to stand still. I want you to step into my case. I want you to intervene for me. I need you to give me rest. Rest from sin. Rest from guilt. Rest from confusion. Rest from demonic oppression. Rest from the world system. Rest from the things that are pulling you apart. Rest from those things that will not allow your heart to focus on anything serious. Some of you listening to me, God could have taken you far. But you are entangled. You are entangled in sin. You are entangled in the wrong relationship. You are entangled in something that is has stuck your feet into the mud. But Jesus is saying, come. Just as you are, come. Bring your body to him. He who answers prayer will help us today. Shall I ask you wherever you are to rise if you can rise up to kneel down if you can kneel down, or just to just to step forth your hand and say, God, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others you are calling, while you are wanting to touch others, while you are seeking to help others, do not pass me by. I don't want to be a fool who hears the word of God and does not do it. I don't want to be that man. I don't want to be that woman who hears the word of God and say, I will think about it tomorrow. I don't want to procrastinate my obedience. I'm hearing you saying, all ye that labor and are heavy lady, I will give you rest. You tried doctors before. You tried others. Why don't you try him? Even if, even if you want us to try him. Why don't you come to Jesus and say, Lord, you said that if I come to you, give me rest. I have come. And I have come just as I am. I have come with all my challenges. I have come with my life. I am here. Do something deliberate with my life. Shall we pray together? Shall we pray wherever you are? We are ending this meeting quite early. Because I sense that it's just the beginning of what we need to do tonight. And you need to pray. Can you just call on God for yourself right now? Please call on God. Call on God. Open your heart. Open your mouth to talk to God and say, Lord, you have said, stand still. Stand still. And let me show you the word of God. Stand still. Let me show you what God wants to do in your life. Stand still and let me cancel you with the cancel of heaven. Will you pray and say, God, I have decided to shut the door. I have decided to stay. I have decided to stand still. Open my ears and open my eyes that I may see. Speak to me, O God, that I may see the good way. Don't let me be you know, moving elter and skelter. Don't allow me, O oh God, to be beaten about the bush. Please, Lord, I'm here. Speak your word to me. I will walk there. I will walk there. I will walk there. Go ahead. Go ahead and pray. And are you listening to the word of God here? Jesus said, I am the way. There is no other way that leads to glory. There's no other way that leads to deliverance. There's no other way that leads to forgiveness of sin. 
There's no other way by which you are going to find peace and find rest for your soul. I am the way. There's no other truth you know that can set you free. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the truth that you must know. I am the truth that will set you free. I am the truth that will release you from every bondage. I am the truth. And I am the life. I am the life. As we call on God together, what is your decision today? What step are you taking as an individual? Don't allow this meeting to pass as one of the usual convocations. Let's settle an issue with God from tonight and say, Lord, I will not let you go unless you help me. Some of you say, oh, I wish I can just get to Kaduna now. The word of God has come to you where you are. The Lord has come to you where you are. Can you respond to God by yourself now and say, Lord, here am I. Now, as you are coming, do not hide anything from me. Open up. Can you tell him where you have been? Can you tell him where things got lost? Can you tell him where you missed the path? Can you tell him how you began to sink? Can you tell him how you began to be scattered in life? Can you tell him where you lost the grace? And you enter into disgrace. Can you tell him where everything went wrong? He said, come. I will give you rest. Come. I will give you rest. That is his promise. And that promise will never fail. If you will come to him. I want to pray with you right now. If you are in any center, can you stand where you are? Lifting up your right and say, God, I'm coming to you. And if you can just take a step out and just kneel before the Lord, kneel on the altar there and say, Father, no one else could help me except you. Send me help from today. Do something new with my life and give me victory. The Lord is there to answer your prayer. Are you there? You used to come to the Lord before. But something happened and everything has become dry. You are only living in the memories of the past. You say, oh, when things used to be good. But God, who makes things, who changes things, is standing here now. Say, come to me. I'm the God who gives second chance to people. Come, I will give you rest. I will start afresh with you. Don't hesitate to come. It's possible that you are even a preacher hearing me. You have missed the way. You have missed the way of walking with God. You have been lured to try other methods. And they have not worked. And everything is looking scattered. Come back. Come unto me. I will give you rest. That's what he says. Ask, where is the ancient path? Where is that old landmark that I missed? I want to return. The mighty hand of God will draw you. I would like to pray right now. All the people that are standing up or stretching for their hand to heaven or you are kneeling, you are kneeling before the Lord and say, God, I'm coming. I will not let this time pass me. I've struggled enough. I want to cast all my cares at your feet. Take that step right away. And then I will be praying for you. And if you will care to put your hand on your heart as a sign of personal commitment and surrender to say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Here is my heart. Please step in and do what you want to do with me even at this time. Let's pray together. Father, this evening, thank you because you are standing again in the midst of your people. You are speaking deliberately into our lives. You are saying, stand, stand still and let me show you the way. Let me show you the word of God. Let me show you the plan of God for your life. Lord, as your servants and your children, wherever they are, as they are turning aside to say, let me just consider this for once. 
Lord, reach out to them. As you did to Moses. And that single encounter changed his life and changed his story. I ask Lord again tonight that you will reach out to your people. Reach out to that man. Reach out to that brother. Reach out to that sister there. Reach out, oh God, unto this family and do a new thing in their midst according to your promise. There are people, God, who are honestly under heavy yokes. Yokes. All manner of yokes that the enemy had put on their lives. Yokes of sin. Yokes of backsliding. Several God under the yoke, oh God, of demonic activity. But you said, come to me, I'll give you rest. When the woman with the issue of law came and touched you, you gave her rest. Mary Magdalene used to be under the yoke of seven demons. You delivered her and gave her rest. Zacchaeus was under the yoke of sin and social rejection. But when you touched him, when he saw you, you gave him rest. His house became the center where the Savior can sit. Lord, I ask this moment, O oh God, all those that are reaching out to you, wherever they are, from Cameroon, O oh God, to Uganda, wherever they are, this moment, O oh God, do something new. Reach out to your people, O oh God, and bring them into rest. Deliver them and give them a testimony. Thank you because you will do it. Now, Father, we commit all ourselves to you. You have gathered us for this convocation this year. And you are saying, ask the ancient path. Please reveal your mind to us. Show us how to run in this end time. In this perilous and precarious time, teach us, Lord, how to walk in the way. All those, O oh God, who are already been diverted, those, O oh God, who are confused with the modernism of our age, will you please, Lord, call them and show them the good way, cause us to see Jesus again, who himself is the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you because you will do this. Thank you because you will give us opportunity again to give testimony of what you have done in the course of this convocation. Thank you. And for all those who are saying yes to the Lord, all those that have come to you, o God, tonight, please step into their hearts. Make your permanent abode with them. Put your hand in their hand, O God, and lead them the way everlasting. Thank you. I trust you, God, that their names will be written in the book of life of the Lamb because they are coming to you with their genuine heart. They are crying to you and say, Lord, forgive me. You will do it according to your promise. Thank you. Thank you for hearing this prayer this moment. Thank you, God, for giving us a stable connection for this one. We believe you, Lord, that you will cause this meeting to grow in strength, in capacity, it will grow, O oh God, in utterance and in conviction. And that, Lord, the Bible study, the prayer of prayer, and everything else that will be going on, your spirit will guide us. And your great name will be glorified. Thank you for hearing this time. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. <laughs>